Okay, so if the potential energy, if the uh, it does not uh, depend on on time, um, I just noticed that there's a uh, missing p. If the, if the uh, potential energy does not depend on time, and if the particle is in some sort of stable state, okay. So then basically that means that the system is, is time independent, or at least that you can in principle just uh, separate the time part, the temporal part of the wave function from the uh, spatial part of the wave function, okay? So you'd have some uh, spatial part which is essentially static, and then some time part which, um, which allows, which, which basically um, uh, gives you the time evolution of that of that uh, spatial part okay and so these are called essentially stationary waves or stationary states okay and so let's um, let's see how we do this so what we do so the first thing the first step is that we um, is that we just guess that we can do this so we or we we say for situations in which we can do this we write the wave function as a product of spatial and temporal parts psi of x and phi of t. Now notice I've used the same symbol psi for the spatial part and as the entire wave function. Usually this is um, clear from context. Okay, you can p figure this out from context. I've tried to make a slight difference in the notation. Uh, the, the, the time independent part psi of x is a, sort of a lower uh, sort of a lowercase psi whereas the um, the full wave, wave function with that has both temporal and spatial parts has um, is sort of a capital psi. So anyway, if we plug this into the Schrodinger equation, okay, uh, now uh, the second derivative of the uh, the spa second spatial derivative only acts on the um, the, spa the spatial part, the time independent part, psi of x, and so then we just this is a constant with regard with respect to that, okay. The uh, with respect to x, uh, and now we've just multiplied u x. I mean psi x phi, phi of t. So this is the total wave function, and then again the time derivative only depend it only acts on phi, and psi of x is just a constant. Okay, with respect to that derivative to the time derivative. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have this. This is a Schrodinger equation again. Again, where we've just assumed this uh, separation of variables. And now we divide both sides by, um, by the uh, um, by the total wave function psi phi, okay. And what we get is uh, this will get a one over one. This term will, will the the phi's will cancel and we'll get a one over one over psi, okay. So minus h bar squared over two m times one over psi of x times the second spatial derivative of psi plus u of x, and then. Um, uh, over here, um, we get uh, when we divide by uh, psi times phi, then uh, we get a one over uh, phi of t, okay? Because the psi cancels, uh, d phi dt. So if you look at this, the left side contains no time dependence. There's no again u is we've assumed that u is a time independent potential. Now this is the, just the, the time independent part of the wave function. Over here we only have the, sp the, the um, spatial independent part of the wave function or the, uh, the temporal part of the wave function. Okay, And so uh, this is, uh, we've now divided the, the, uh, the uh, Schrodinger equation into two parts um, and we basically separated variables. Okay, Now what we need to recognize is that x and t, this, the spatial uh, variable x and the time variable t are independent are independent from each other. Okay, so if we imagine that a particular at a particular position x equals to x1 and t equals t1, then this equality must hold. Okay, so if we have a, if x is equal to x1 here, if we plug in x is equal to x1 over here and t is equal to t1 over here, then this equality must hold. But then if we just change one of these, so for example if we make if we keep x equals to x1 then this part will be the same this won't change but now if we make t is equal to t2 this part will change but it has to, this equality still has to hold 